Thank you for joining us today. Uh, welcome to our Kronos for Banking webinar on maximizing the branch for today and tomorrow. Today's speakers are uh, myself, Meredith Dean. I'm Director of Product and Services for Kronos. We also have joining us Lacey Thompson, Market Manager at America First Credit Union, and Jeremy Deemer, Manager Branch Systems at America First Credit Union. The agenda for today, uh, for the branch for today and tomorrow, is first we're going to go over perspectives um, on old and new branches. So what's the difference between old versus new? From there, we are going to talk about the right data that you need in terms of looking at the branch of the future and the various approaches. At that point, I'll turn it over to our guests from America First Credit Union and they will go through some exciting things they're doing in their branches. And finally, we'll close up with the various types of branches of the future. So to start out with, just from a historical perspective of looking at the branch, data tended to be sort of all over the place. Um, you know, you would get information perhaps from your core. You might have some manual tracking systems and just getting information from a variety of different sources, none of which was really actionable and enabled you to really understand uh, how to best present your branches to your account holders in ways that they could do their banking most effectively. But today, of course, we have much better uh, ways to pull information together this information that you're seeing on your screen is from our retail branch lobby study. And this goes through various branch lobby wait times. We do break out our top 10 institutions, our bottom 10 institutions, and the overall average. So we've done this study since 2011, and you can see um, the variety of years here and the differences amongst the wait times of account holders within the, branch, within the branches. This kind of information is really critical when you're thinking about the way that you want to transform your branches and making sure that that account holder wait time is acceptable. As you can see, our top institutions were as low as 2 minutes and 36 seconds uh, in 2015 versus the bottom 10 at 11 minutes and 18 seconds. So obviously that's critical information to make sure you're driving the design and staffing of your branch. Basically, the data that you get is going to help you find the right management approach. There's no one size fits all in terms of the branch of the future. So it's important to make sure you take a look at your data and let that support your strategic design for your branch of the future. And now I'm going to turn it over to Lacey, and she's going to talk about some of the great things they're doing at America First Credit Union. Okay, thanks, Meredith. My name is Lacey Thompson. I am a market manager for America First Credit Union and have worked with the company over the last 18 years. I also have Jeremy Deemer, manager of our branch systems development with me today, and he'll be speaking in just a little bit about the branches of the future. America First Credit Union is based out of Riverdale, Utah. We've been in business for 78 years. We have 123 branch locations throughout Utah, Nevada, Idaho, and Arizona, and we serve over 831,000 members and have an asset size of $8.4 billion. I will be speaking about our use of the FMSI scheduling tool as it pertains to our branches today and how it will be useful as we look forward to the branch of the future. When we first partnered with FMSI about a year and a half ago, we had four main objectives we wanted to accomplish. Our first objective was we wanted the ability to create a teller schedule quickly. Second, we wanted a better visual of the historical data of our transaction volumes. We have several different in-house reports tracking this, but nothing with a daily visual like the FMSI daily editor. Third, we wanted a tool for measuring staffing efficiency. 
And fourth, we wanted to be able to create efficient schedules to meet the demand and maintain high levels of service. Next slide. Our first objective was we wanted the ability to create a teller schedule quickly. In the past, we would use an Excel spreadsheet to create our schedules, relying on our lead teller's perspective of when we are busy and not necessarily reality. We have some branch locations with only a handful of tellers and others with over 20. Creating a teller schedule was a time-consuming process, and we wanted to utilize our lead teller's time more efficiently. FMSI has been a great time saver for our leadership team. We can create a schedule in a fraction of the time that we used to. Next slide. One of my favorite things about FMSI is the daily editor. This allows us to quickly identify where we are overstaffed and understaffed. The ability to understand peak days and times for our transactions. On this example graph at the bottom, it shows me that on this specific day, for every 15 minutes, how many employees I will need. The green represents the need, and the blue is representing what is actually scheduled. This gives me a quick glance to see that on this specific day, I am overstaffed. One specific example of the daily editor that we utilize is determining when to send our tellers to lunch. In the past, we used to start lunches at 11 o'clock, and everyone would go one right after another until lunches were complete. Now with using FMSI, we are able to see when the best time really is to send our staff to lunch. On some days, we found that it is better to send two people at the exact same time and then not send anyone at all for an hour or so during the rush. Once that rush is over, now we can start lunches back up and double up on them again. We now can identify and schedule all of this within the daily editor. We love the interactive graph that FMSI has created that allows us to see what our day will look like in those 15 minute increments. We now have the visual to see exactly what will happen and we can make the necessary adjustments to our schedule very quickly. Next slide. <coughs> Measuring efficiency. We now can evaluate actual staffing needs versus demand. In most of our branches, we've been able to reduce staff through attrition. For example, in one branch location, within the first six months of using FMSI, we were able to cut 70 hours from our teller line, reducing our expenses and our excess waiting for work time. We have also found the need to add staff based on demand in a few locations. We now have less waiting for work time and have reduced our excess labor costs. We've been able to better schedule for those peak times. Another benefit we have found is we can now see how often our lead tellers are tellering and have the exact cost associated with each transaction they complete. Along with that, we can see if we have a manager or assistant manager completing teller transactions and how much that is costing. This gives us a quick snapshot to see that when we are having our leadership team or higher paid employees tellering, that this may not be the best use of our time. We can evaluate how we can better use our teller team to meet the transaction demand so that our supervisors can take care of their other responsibilities. When looking to hire for a teller position, we're able to visually identify the branch needs. We sit down as a leadership team and review FMSI to help us determine what our future employee schedule needs will be. As we do a job interview, we're better prepared to identify candidates that will best fit our needs. The employees are more engaged while at work because there is less waiting for work time. Our brick and mortar locations are open from 9 to 6 and our grocery store locations are open from 9 to 7. Since we have started using FMSI, we have found that we are opening and closing our branches with fewer employees. The staff has appreciated being able to sleep in a little longer and get off a little earlier. 
Who wouldn't love to get off a little earlier on a Friday night? This is one of the many reasons that we have support from our frontline employees since we have switched over to FMSI. We are watching to see the overall impact on wait times. If we are more effective in staffing for when members are using our branches, this will help eliminate long wait times and help increase our service numbers. FMSI has been a win-win for our leadership team, for our frontline employees, and even for our members. That is all that I have for today, and at this point, I'd like to hand off to Jeremy. All right, thank you, Lacey. Uh, my name is Jeremy Deemer. Uh, I am the manager of Branch Systems Development for America First Credit Union. I've been with the credit union for about 14 years, and I'm excited to talk uh, today about our Innovation Center and, and what we've done with our Innovation Center and kind of the journey that we, we took with it. So the Innovation Center is located in uh, downtown Salt Lake City in an area called City Creek. Um, the Innovation Center has been open since June of last year. And uh, the main purpose of the space, as we were trying to decide um, how to better get a handle and a representation of uh, technical trends and banking in the future, uh, we started to kind of uh, work through what we would like to see in a, in a space where our membership could come in and help us to, to pretty much define what the future of banking should be. So on this next slide, you'll see some of the things that we kind of talked about on this journey um, of preparing for the Innovation Center. Um, you know, what the, the creed or the, or the vision of this space was. And it very much is a place where we believe that our members uh, can come in and give voice to not only hardware, but software and transactional um, uh, type elements within the space so that they can say, this is something that I would like to see in future branches. And when I say future branches, I just mean um, iterations of branches that we'll be moving out. We're not interested in a future branch concept. That's not what we're trying to do. I think a lot of institutions are, are trying to roll out a, a branch of the future, a future branch, and um, they put that in front of their membership, and then their membership says, no, that's not really what I would like to you know, have in my branch, and so they roll out a different version of that uh, branch of the future. We're trying to do it a little bit differently. We've got this location in in the, the heart of Salt Lake City, and we are allowing our membership to come into this space because it is, uh, it's in, uh, located in a destination area here in, in Salt Lake. And so we're getting a very good array of membership coming in all the way from northern Utah to southern Utah to the surrounding states that come here and they use this space uh, to access their accounts and to do transactions, and they give voice to the equipment and, and, and things that we have in here. Um, and so this very much is a space where our membership comes in and on production accounts will utilize new hardware and software that we put in front of them and, and get their feedback on. And it's really provided us as an organization a great way to have another voice for our membership, for them to be the, the catalyst for, I would use this in your 120 branches or I wouldn't use this. Please don't, you know, disrupt the branch with this particular piece of hardware or software solution. You know, this is something that we don't want to see in our branches. And so we're listening to that, and, and we're using that to inform us on the stuff that we're doing uh, moving forward. Um, on the next slide, uh, we show uh, some of the representations of some of the things that we're, we're working on. Um, this is a this is a slide that shows where we're located in in the space. Um, it's in an area called City Creek. Uh, it is that kind of downtown uh, area as uh, a, a, a destination um, space as far as Salt Lake City goes. Um, if you'll go to the next slide, so this is the interior space, and and you can see that it is very different from the traditional brick and mortar branch. Um, we wanted to do that in, intentionally. This has no teller line. It has 
uh, that doesn't have the standard loan officer desks. Um, we tout in this space that we can do everything that a brick and mortar branch does. We're just going to do it in a different way. And that was one of the mandates from our senior leadership was that this can't just be a beta site. This can't just be a lab. This just this can't be some place where members come in and, and you're going to show them, you know, test accounts and things that aren't fully, you know, baked into production. This has to be a place that serves them. America First has a standard of service for its membership and for its 120 plus branches. And and we've got to make sure that we protect that brand and make sure that when members come in that they realize that they can be served just like they would in any of our grocery store or brick and mortar branches. Um, but it is gonna be done in, a, in probably a different way and it's probably gonna be done in, a, in an advanced way and maybe a, a more techie uh, a type of way and, and something that they're not, uh, you know, isn't traditional and they're not used to. And that's been good. That's given us a, a great opportunity to have a conversation with our membership about what they expect, what they would like to see, some do's and don'ts in our branches. Um, in this picture, you can see quite a bit of the solutions that we, we have represented. Um, in, the, in the forefront of the shot, you'll see we have um, multi-taction tables where we have our product pages. And you can see on the white table there in the corner, there's little pucks sitting on the table, and those represent our mobile offerings. You can take that puck, put it on the table, and it will interact with that puck. So one puck will say um, card guard, and you put it on the table, and it, it brings up an array of things about card guard, and these little spindles come off of the puck, and, and you can touch them and play video, and you can make the pages large and small, and we have one on investment banking and one on business banking, and and one on our visa products and auto uh, products. And, and people can pick these up and, and, and they're our product sheets. They're the way that our members self-inform themselves about our products and services. And so it's cool to watch people engage and, and you know, a 10-year-old kid comes in and puts a puck on the table and flips a sheet talking about investment banking. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the kind of stuff you, you normally, you know, you, what 10-year-old kid walks into a, a credit union and you know, browses the brochure rack on investment banking or, or business accounts. It just doesn't happen, but because it's done in kind of a playful way, you know, we're attracting uh, people from all different age groups and demographics to come in and, and utilize the services. We have home banking stations uh, where people can sit down on the blue couches and have kind of a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder conversation with the, the crew members that work this space. Um, and they can talk to them about home banking, show them demos, show them how to log into their accounts, and maybe see check images, and I'll train them on some of the, the, the services that our home banking application uh, has in it that, that they're maybe not aware of. Um, if you go to the next slide, uh, some of the things that we're really excited about and, and that our membership especially is excited about is, is self-serve. And, and this idea of self-serve has been around for a while. We've seen it in the Home Depots, and we've seen it in the Walmarts and, and, and the grocery stores. And, and people are used to that. People are, you know, there's a segment of the population that, that they only use self-serve now. Um, we have a couple of different versions of self-serve in our space so that we can, uh, again, this is about the member voice. And so we didn't go out and say, okay, here's one machine. Now tell us what you think. We actually put competitors in the space side by side, and the members can utilize either machine or both, and then give us feedback on, I like this machine better. I like the functionality that it has over this other one. You know, And so we're listening to that. And, and this idea of self-serve, you know, we, we kind of like the term assisted self-serve. We're, we're not, uh, you know, we're not going to just have our membership come up to these machines and there will be, you know, no longer any interaction between, you know, our staff and the member. If you want to come in and hand that check to me, I'll, I'll walk over to the machine and I'll deposit it in there for you. Or I'll train you on how to use the machine. And if there's a hold or an override, I'm right there uh, to help you through that process. If you have any questions on that transaction, I can jump in at any time and and give you assistance. This is something our membership has told us, yes, we want it out in our branches, and we're excited about looking at where we place this and, and where we put it. I think the fact that we have the Innovation Center, um, it allows us uh, 
to make those decisions, um, you know, in a less risky way. You know, if I have my membership that comes in from Park City and uses this equipment, it's less of a risk for me to move this equipment now out to Park City because I know my members have used it. I know what the survey response has been, and I know they like it and and want to see it in their branch. And so, from the credit union, the investment we put into the innovation center will will pay great dividends going forward because now it's less of a risk to move, you know, technology and softwares beyond just the innovation center and out to our our 120. Uh, branch network. Uh, the next slide uh, represents um, the other uh, one of the other solutions that we're very excited about, which is Remote Expert. And Remote Expert has given us the ability to provide that key person, that key knowledge base on whatever pick your subject, pick the product or service, and we can put our membership in front of that expert when they walk in. And that has been a huge benefit to our membership. They love the fact that they can walk in to our space and sit down in one of these private areas and have a conversation with an expert on whatever it may be, business account or an HSA or an IRA expert, and uh, they're not making an appointment for that. And, and this has great potential for us moving forward that for staffing purposes, you know, you can't staff a mortgage expert or an IRA expert at every branch. It's just it's just not feasible, and so this allows us um, to, you know, have that key person available for our membership. Um, and this is something that we have, uh, you know, that will be part of our branch network. That that will go forward. That's in our designs for um, our new spaces, and and we're looking at how we can incorporate these types of areas into our our current. Um, branches and, and into remodels and refurbishes that we're doing. If you'll move to the next slide, uh, it, this slide I think talks about, um, you know, the overall as far as net promoter for the space. You know, the credit union already has a very high net promoter score and, and we're very proud of that and we, we love to see that our members are promoters of our products and services and we wanted to make sure that the Innovation Center was, was no different. And you can see uh, from the score, it, 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 it is uh, being surveyed at a, at a high score. And, and the primary reason for that is that, you know, we had a built-in relationship with our members. And they, they love the credit union. They love the products and services that, that we provide. And they see the Innovation Center as an extension of those products and services. And they love the fact that they have another channel, another voice to speak back to us and speak with us about shaping their financial future. That's really what this has been about. And so it's been very positive in, in those regards. Uh, if you'll move to the next slide. Just some of the comments about uh, you know what people have, have said uh, and people are honest about uh, you know uh, they're going to tell you exactly how they feel and some of those comments are very creative comments and, and people are, are passionate about you know, you know their their financial well-being and and especially with credit unions they're very passionate about their credit unions and and have a lot to say if you give them that voice uh, you'll go to the next slide and, and then again just some just some quick comments about you know what our membership has said and and you know we have a couple of different avenues survey responses that we send out we've done Facebook live events where we you know, real time have people, you know, viewing the space and we're doing a tour on Facebook uh, on the live event and we're asking, you know, what do you like? You know, would it be remote expert? Would it be assisted self-serve? Would it be, you know, the touch tables or maybe our enhanced ATM systems that we have or or, or whatever it may be? And, and as you can see, people overwhelmingly just kept saying self-serve, self-serve, you know. I, I love my teller. Don't displace my teller but I love self-serve and I would love to use that in my branch. And so, you know, it's it's key to have that communication. If you're going to open up a, a space like this and, and tout that you're listening and that you want to have these conversations with members, then you need to, you know, give them an opportunity to voice that in, in all different channels. Um, go to the next slide. 
uh, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, some of the different products and services and, and things that uh, we have, you know, partners that we've worked with and, 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 and that's key within the space is, is the partners that we've chosen um, have to be forward thinking. They have to, you know, have, be, have systems that um, are adaptable that we can take the information from and use to inform us, you know, moving forward. Those are the types of companies and stuff that we're looking to benefit from. And, um, you know, our relationship with, with FF, FMSI and, and our, our uh, uh, relationship with, with Kronos, uh, we actually have used that system for many years, um, our time card system, and then recently have partnered with FMSI to review what we're doing in our branches, you know, 120 branches and how we're staffing those branches. And using that information and in, in coupling that with the information from the Innovation Center because the individuals that work here are very different from the individuals that work in our branches. And so we need a partner that can take a look at that information and tell us, right, hey, this, this space runs differently than your regular branches and so the model for this space is going to be different and so how do you take that information and understand how you can translate it to you know future branches that you'll be building that have a model of right a no teller line more of a self-serve uh, assisted self-serve relationship remote experts that are you know on, on uh, a campus or maybe in a back office area someplace you know those are things that we have never ventured into before and 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 you've got to find the right type of partners the right type of solutions that can help inform you on the decisions because just as it would be risky for me to put a piece of equipment out into a branch it's just as risky to put a new type of employee out into one of these branches without understanding how many there should be, what the hours should be, what the skill set should be, um, how I do, uh, um, how do I cover that branch uh, as we're building these branches? Where's the skill set come from? And these are things that uh, partners like FMSI, partners like um, you know some of the other solution providers that we have in this space are able to provide. You know, to us and for us, and and we're excited about that. We're we're just starting the next phase of both of these product projects, which is, you know, we've opened all of FMSI up to all the branch managers um, now, and and Lacey and and her group have have been running that and been doing a great job. And now we're we're going to the next step of how do we take the information that we have out of the innovation center with the crew members and and the individuals who work this space, and how do we apply that to what we've learned from FMSI and then move that forward to other branches. Um, it's exciting. We're very excited. We're, we're grateful for the partnership, and um, we're looking forward to, to moving some of this stuff out and see how it goes for the future. Uh, that's all I have. And turn the time back over to Meredith. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Um, just to follow up on that, we'll actually go through the branch of the future type. So there are three different types of branches that will um, be presented in the future, of course, and even today. The first is the personalized experience. There's technology enabled and, of course, traditional branches. So the first type of branch of the future that's uh, talked about a good bit is the idea of the personalized experience branch, which is very much modeled after um, the idea of an Apple branch, the Apple iBar. Um, quite often in this type of branch, um, organizations will use universal associates to make sure that they can truly serve their account holders' needs with pretty much anything that walks into the branch. Uh, it's critical, of course, to have the right kinds of employees there at the right time for your account holders. And so 
using technology like human capital management or workforce management tools will help you understand matching the skill set and the appropriate times for people to the account holder traffic pattern. From there, the technology-enabled branch is very much what Jeremy talked about um, today when he referenced uh, the America First branches, making sure that there's use of um, a variety of different uh, technology types, enabling the customer or account holder to be sure to handle their own transactions as well. And from there, of course, the traditional branch, which we've known for many, many years, um, the technology that helps support a traditional branch today, of course, is cash recyclers, uh, as well as teller capture. And even using um, workforce management tools here can help you schedule your employees amongst a variety of roles within a traditional branch. In closing, uh, it's critical for you to take a look at your data to help you know um, where you should be in terms of the kind of branch you should build for the future. And this little cartoon sort of speaks to that. Um, everyone's saying, be yourself, but they all look the same. So following um, the sort of flavor of the day is, is not the best way to make sure you have success for your strategy in the branch of the future. Thank you very much for joining us today on our webinar. Uh, in closing, we will be following up on any questions that came in. Uh, on an individual basis. We will also email a direct link to the recording and you'll have a, a access to a PDF version of, of this presentation as well. Thanks so much for your time today. Have a great day.